Hello, and welcome back to Speed Dating for Ghosts. Last time, we took a quiz with Fran and did just terribly. I only got one answer correctly because I apparently don't know much ghost trivia, but that's fine. Um, we've been on dates with all the ghosts in the standard game, but we haven't gone to the expansion yet, so let's go to hell, huh? Oh, hey there, stranger. You look like you could use some... R&R. &R. Romance and Retribution. The name's Gale. I'm a travel agent for the dead. I've got all the best deals. Singles cruises on the River Styx, cookouts on the shores of hell itself, all-inclusives at Daytona Beach. You may be dead, but that doesn't mean you can't still have fun. Fran told me about you. Fran? Who's Fran? JK, baby doll. Francine and I go way back. How do you know her? We've been close for an eternity, at least. Pretty much the minute we became ghosts. She's been like my other half. Anywho, I'm organizing a singles event. It's on Mortal Beach, overlooking balmy Brimstone Bay. I was about to say Brinestone, it's not the word there. There's a great view of two whole circles, three when the weather cooperates. It's going to be a party for sure. Sounds great. Then you'll love what I've cooked up. There's some real party animals here. Just wait till you meet Dave. But hey, you didn't pick up my brochure just to hear me blab on. Unless you did. Because then, I totally have a timeshare to sell you. Let's get you to the beach. We'll start things off with an icebreaker. Something familiar. Some speed dates. Sorry if you heard me pop my hand there. <laughs> If not, then just pretend they didn't say anything. For the living, the shores of hell might seem like a strange place to take a vacation. It's no Maui, or Cancun, or Bali, but hell has its charms. The sand on Mortal Beach, like the water in the bay, is piping hot year-round. The air is sweltering, heavy, like a good sauna, or an oven. In hell, there is no night or day. The crimson light of eternal flames casts a pleasant, flickering glow on everything at a comfortable distance. In a way, it's kind of romantic. The bell rings. The first ghost appears. Wait. Are they a ghost? Salutations, brah. They call me Andy. You party? You look like you party. I party. Rad. Partying's like my main deal. My raison d'etre. I, like, exist to have a good time. Bring the awesome. What's your favorite kind of party? Hmm. Oh, I like a good rager. Me too. Rager's rage. Like the fires of hell. Probably why I like it down here. Nothing like a wild night. The kind that comes with a story. So this one time... Rad. Story time! I was at a house party. Classic setting. I had an oboe. What? Why? Who brings an oboe to a house party? I played some new radicals. I don't actually know who that is. Yes! Absurd to the max. Bonus points for a good band. You only get what you give. I miss my bucket hat days. Then I smashed the oboe. <laughs> Remind me to invite you to my next party. Bring an oboe. Thanks for the awesome anecdote. As a party demon, always happy to compare notes. You're a demon? Indubitably. A demon is like a ghost. We float around like you. 
but a demon was never alive. We're sort of born like this, with a singular purpose. For me, that purpose is partying. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. Nandy chugs a six-pack. All the cans at once. Ah, that's better. How do you... That was impressive. I'm skilled, for sure. You know that whole 10,000 hours to get good thing? I've partied for a million hours, probably. Plus, there's hella incentive. If I don't party, I die. That's horrifying. It's mostly good times. I got a sweet deal. Other demons gotta do grody stuff. Murder demons. Screaming demons. One time I met a cleanliness demon. That was an awkward date. I like messes. Mucho gratitude for the kind words. I'm proud of the mess that is me. Hold tight though. Gotta dance a bit. Andy dances a bit. Cha-cha-cha! There we go. All good in the hood. Hey! Wanna hear a fun fact? These beads and shades aren't just for show. They lessen my need to party. How? By exuding party. Sort of like an RPG or something. Special item effects. Plus three to partying. The bell ringeth. Time to mingle. See you later, crocodile. A party demon. That's new. Kind of wears out my voice a little bit. Worth it, though. Another ghost appears. And what do we have here? Another lonely spirit? Tell me. Lonely spirit, what is loss? The absence of something? Why, yes, dear. Precisely. You must feel it too, then. That profound emptiness. The loss of your life. I do feel it. That is good. Now just let go of that feeling. Try to forget you ever existed. Ghosts are desperate for purpose. We lie to ourselves. Tell ourselves we still matter. That a part of us remains. But who is to say we matter anymore? We are not even matter. We are more like echoes. Epilogues of unfinished stories. Soon there will be nothing more to say. You and I will truly be nothing. I believe it will be glorious. What have you lost? Like you, I lost my life. Unlike you, it happened twice. They call me Agatha, Bane of Brixdale, Connecticut. An irregularity in the blood count. I suppose you could, at one time, call me a vampire. Now I am a ghost. How is that possible? I was turned into a vampire. That made me undead. It took a stake through my heart to simply make me dead. The stake looks painful. It only hurt for a second. My former lover had impeccable aim. She had just discovered I was a vampire. She wasted little time. Now I wander between worlds. A nothing in nowhere. Deserving this lonely death. My 
broken heart on full display. No one deserves to be lonely. Of course I deserve loneliness. Just as others feel they deserve happiness. Let me decide what I need, dear. You just worry about you. Perhaps I am being a tad dramatic. You seem quite harmless. I am complicated. I did sense as much. From the moment you appeared across the table, you have a depth about you. Uh, you have depth too, Agatha. I suppose. Though it is more curse than blessing. I'd sacrifice depth for peace. The bell rings. The bell. Time to move on, lonely ghost. It is probably for the best. We will meet again soon enough. Duh, Agatha's kind of a lot, huh? Another ghost appears. Hi! Hello! Excuse me. Sorry to bug you. I'm looking for my human. Have you seen her? Uh, does she look like a ram? A ram? You mean Gale? Oh, no. Gale's not my human. She's around here somewhere. I'm sure she is. Uh. My name's Dave. It's super to meet you. Even if I am kind of sad today. Yes, we, we have to pat the ghost dog, obviously. Thank you for the pat. I like pats, as a rule. But please ask next time. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what kind of dog are you? Hmm. The cute kind? Kidding. When I was alive, I think my human called me... Retriever Cross? Cross with what? Crossed? I gotta be crossed with something? I guess some other kind of pup? I never really knew my dad. But whatever he was, I guess. When did you last see your owner? That's sort of complicated. My human is a wisp. A piece of a spirit. She's usually right by me. Just floating around. Never leaves my side. Why is she a wisp? I think because she's not dead yet. A wisp is what happens when just a part of a person dies. That's what Gail said anyway. All I know is, one minute I was alive, eating some chocolate I found, welp. The next I died. When I came to, I was a ghost. And the wisp was there too. I guess that means part of my human died with me. That's so sad. I guess. I try not to think too much about how sad it is. So where did the wisp go? I sure hope so. I just wish I could smell where she is. It's so frustrating not being able to sniff stuff. In the meantime, I'll be waiting. The bell rings. Ah. Woof, woof, woof. Sorry. I guess I'm on edge. Still not sure what to think of you. Also, I keep forgetting when the bell rings. It's time to change places. A few more times. And I'll be trained, hopefully. If you see my human, tell her to come home, okay? Dave almost ran away when you pet him without asking. You're going to need to be more careful if you want to earn his trust. Sorry. The second round begins. Sup, Spooky Uki. Righteous to see you again. Splendiferous, even. 
I like your bikini. Thanks. I like to switch it up. Right now, it's polka dot time. Where'd you get it? The mall. The demon mall. It's like a regular mall, just with a really freaky food court. Lots of gnarly eats. Decent place to party. Which reminds me. Here we go again. Scoozy. Andy does some random air guitar. Hello, East St. Louis. There. All better, Jet Setter. Hey. What's your opinion of platypuses? Platypi? Whatever. Those hairy duck dudes. Look it up. I like them. Seriously, platypuses? Platypi? Whatever. They're pretty cool. How can you not? They're the ultimate party animals. I think about shades. Sunglasses. Like the ones on my dome. If you put them on an animal? Who looks the most down to party? A platypus. It's inarguable. Okay, fine. Kangaroos are up there. Dogs, too. Especially if they're in a sidecar. I love dogs in sidecars. I love dogs that party. Like, Dave the dog? Balto over there? Pup's goal-oriented for show. But also scatterbrained as heck. Loyal, but flighty. A total Libra. What about Gale? Gale's a tricky one. Total type A. Friendly, but... Not your friend. Strong Gemini vibes. How do you know all this? Internet. Oh! Here I go fading away again. Nature calls. Andy crushes a beer on their head. There we go. So, where were we? Um... Andy still appears to be fading. Maybe you should keep partying. What? It didn't work? That never happens! Put on more party accessories. I'm trying! Maybe if I... Put on more party accessories? I left them in the car. The bell rings. I... Gotta go. Andy's been partying for more than a thousand years. I'm sure they'll figure this out. Don't worry. I mean, don't worry that much. Demons aren't even real. Or are they? Turn to drag you further down. I understand why you're down. You cannot truly understand. Not yet, anyway. Time slows when you're here. Even the music slows down a little bit. Does time slow around me? I do not understand why. From my perspective, it ticks away just the same. Perhaps your idea of time moves quicker than is typical. But perhaps it's a product of my curse. Vampirism is a curse? I mean, yeah, dude, do you not, like, read pop culture at all? Anyway, immortality worsens the longer you live. And my hunger for blood is insatiable. Especially now that I cannot feed. When I first became a vampire, it was difficult to find blood without killing people. What about animals? I was, for a period, a hunter. But the animals needed to be large. It was a dangerous way to survive. You see, lonely. Let me try that again. You see, lonely ghost. It is hard to kill that which is undead. But the undead can certainly be maimed. Over time, my tactics evolved. 
I became a nurse. I was quite good at finding veins. It was easy to take more than was needed. A unit for a test that required a vial. I only took more from those healthy enough to give it. How'd you not get caught? Every 12 years, I would move. Another jurisdiction. Far, far away. Enroll anew in a nursing school. Train once more. Work once more. This way, no one noticed that I wasn't aging. Over time, I became quite lonely. Did you know any other vampires? I did not. You would think, over time, we would find each other. But in all my years as a vampire, I did not meet others like me. Except for the one who turned me. And he is no longer in the picture, as they say. Tell me about him. The one who turned me was my husband. My first husband. On our anniversary. Oh, that's brutal. Eight years to the day. He said this way, I would be pretty forever. Oh, God, that's gross. I did not ask to be undead. I wanted to grow old. I wanted to die someday. That is the natural way of things. He did not care what was natural. He did not care what I wanted. What happened to him? I foolishly mistook his gesture for romance and stayed with him for a number of years. But eternity is a long time. Eventually, he left me. Of course he did. What a dick. For someone he deemed prettier. I can only assume he turned her as well. You know, lonely spirit, despite some difficulties, you are a good listener. The bell rings. Should you wish to know me better, you need only look where crimson meets black. However, if you are not interested, I will understand. There needn't be any bad blood between us. Goodbye, lonely spirit. Perhaps I will see you again. A vampire ghost has taken an interest in you. That's... neat. Oh, hi again. It's me, Dave the dog. Wanna hear a joke? I love to tell jokes. Jokes are pretty great, I think. I'd love to hear a joke. Okay, so, this dog walks into a bar. And get this, he walks up to the bartender, and the dog says, give me a gin and ginger. Uh-huh. So then, then, the bartender looks up and says, Holy moly, a talking dog! Dave the dog laughs. That was my human's favorite joke. You're a good dog, Dave. I try. I really do. I don't chew as much stuff now. I sometimes had trouble with that. The place I was haunting didn't have a pup. They kept finding their stuff chewed up. There's less stuff to chew in hell. You're so nice and good. I'm glad you're in hell with me. If I don't find my human, maybe you can be my new one. Oh no! I shouldn't say that out loud. 
I forget I say things now. You'll find your human. I sure hope so. I miss Miriam so much. That was my human's name. Miriam took me for walks twice a day. She let me stop to smell literally everything. And sometimes, when it was extra hot, we'd go swimming in a lake of water. Where could Miriam be? We had favorite places where we'd go on our walks. I bet probably one of those. I bet she's looking for me too. You want more pats? Oh yes please! You pat Dave. Thanks! That makes me feel appreciated. Appreciated and safe. The bell rings. Nah. Woof woof woof! Oh no. I did it again. Sorry. Again. I sure hate that bell. That's the last of the speed dates. Time to pick someone to date. Woo! Pick me! Pick me! Is it really a date if it's with a dog? Wouldn't that just be hanging out? Anyway. Dave is the first option here, so... You came! I knew you'd come! Are you still liking hell? I'm starting to love it! Guess I'm a real hellhound! I thought dogs went to heaven. Oh, we do! But we can come and go, as we please. There's a doggy door. <laughs> That's thoughtful. Oh yeah! They think of everything there. Can we go for a walk? Up on the surface? That sounds like fun. Oh boy! It will absolutely be so fun! I want to take you everywhere. All my favorite places to smell. What about Miriam's Wisp? Oh yeah! Miriam's Wisp! We gotta find her! Good thinking. If we hit up enough spots, we might just find her Wisp. Where could she be? The place we've already been. She's a Wisp. She's drawn to familiar things. The good park? The good pet store? The good couch? One of those, probably. Uh, let's try the park. Oh, great! I love the good park. Dave leads you to a park in a deep ravine. A nearby sign says off-leash dog park, but you don't see any dogs. Maybe this is because it's the middle of the night. There are trees here, all dead. The grass is gray. A ways in, there's a rusty playground. A rubber swing seat dangles on a single chain. It's kind of spooky. Welcome to the good park! My friend Keo would love it. Then I love your friend Keo! Dave runs over to the swing. He starts to tug at the seat with his teeth. It's a tough toy! He says without losing his grip. Then you hear barking. Distant howls of pain and anguish growing closer until they are right up on you. Gurgles, whimpers, low guttural growls of warning and dread. You turn in horror to see a bunch of super cute ghost pups. There's a ghost corgi that looks like a spooky loaf of dog. <laughs> a ghost chihuahua, she's making most of the noise. And a ghost St. Bernard, slobbering ectoplasm. Each has a wisp by their side. Hey there, fellow pups! Dave studies each ghost dog's wisp, and sniffs each ghost dog's ghost butt. None of these are Miriam's wisp. Shucks. This was still fun, though. Where to now? 
The pet store? Yay! I love the pet store! Dave leads you to a pet store a ways into the nearest town. The store is called Pet Your Bottom Dollar. Aww. That pun might be the scariest thing in this game. It's well past midnight and this pet store is closed. There are aisles upon aisles of food and toys. The most expensive stuff is up front. The crap is in the back. Dead dogs don't need to eat. Still, Dave seems pretty excited when he sees all the cans. Let's find some treats! Dave finds an aisle with treats in open air. In containers low enough for most living pups to reach. Ooh! Can I have one? Please, please? You pick. Mm, crunchy dog biscuit. The dog biscuit is shaped like a bone. It's crumbly and says, choose this on it. Apparently a brand name. You toss Dave the dog biscuit. He catches it in his mouth and swallows it whole. It breaks down inside him. Until it's just crumbs. As Dave explores the store, a wild wisp appears. Dilla, nilla, nilla, nilla. Is this Miriam? It's hard to tell. The wisp isn't doing much. They're just kind of floating in front of you. Maybe they're studying you? Do they even know you're there? Hello? Miriam? The wisp crackles like fire. You're not sure what it's trying to say. Nice to meet you too? The wisp buzzes. Is that a good sign? Are you Miriam's wisp? The wisp blinks once. Is that a yes? Miriam! There you are! Miriam's wisp seems excited to see Dave. I'd like you to meet a friend. No, I haven't replaced you. Miriam flickers cautiously. See? A friend! Miriam flickers and flashes. She'll get used to you. She just needs some time. I'm happy we found her. Me too! Miriam seems regretful. She says she's sorry for running away. Miriam vibrates and flickers a bunch. She saw her old car and chased it out of instinct. Before she knew it, she was lost. So she came here. Dave yawns. <sighs> We've been up all night. I'm beat. I think it's home time. You're a good dog, Dave. Thanks for saying that. You're a good human. I'm glad we met. Let's go for another walk soon. Bye, Dave. Bye. Miriam flickers. I have sometimes thought of the final cause of dogs having such short lives, Sir Walter Scott wrote, and I am quite satisfied it is in compassion to the human race. For if we suffer so much in losing a dog after an acquaintance of 10 or 12 years, what would it be if they were to live double that time? For Charlie, Mucho Grande, and all the dogs who made our lives better. Thanks for being good pups. Aww. So now that we've been on a date in hell, if we visit the graveyard, we can go to the beach section. Dave, Spirit of Loyalty, Years Alive, 1999 to 2011, Cause of Death, Chocolate. By all accounts, Dave was a good boy. He sat when asked to sit, fetched when required, and shook a mean paw. But he also loved food. 
like a lot. He liked the taste of all sorts of things. Clothing, the corners of walls, porcupines and or skunks. Dave tried to eat it all, and usually succeeded. But he met his match the day his human Miriam left an entire box of ultra-dark baker's chocolate on the counter. When Miriam found Dave on the kitchen floor, a piece of her died too. That piece follows Dave around, loyal like a dog, in the hopes that when Miriam dies, she will find her best friend and be reunited in the afterlife. Alright, we're coming up on the end here. We'll be done in just a few more videos. I hope you'll join me then. Uh, until that time, bye for now.